This is the Builders Business Success Podcast for builders who want to attract more quality clients who aren't price focused, eliminate cash flow pressure, and get paid for every quote. Here's your host, Mick Hall. Hey, folks, welcome to another episode of Builders Business Success Podcast. We're on holidays from the lives just at the moment, but we wanted to make sure that you've got something to listen to, get inspired by, something to get the thought processes going on the lead up to Christmas while you're having your holidays and getting ready to start the new year again. One of the episodes we did earlier on as we were creating the content for the book was it was all about the best business model for a building business that there is. And there are four pillars, super important pillars that you need to have in place and managing and continuously improving to make sure your building business is growing and is sustainable. So I hope you enjoy this information that we did some time ago uh, while on your lead up to the holidays. It's getting close. Going to have a good time. Hope this is worthwhile. Enjoy the episode. So I want to outline the, the four major parts of the builder's business black belt business model um the reason why i i, I want to outline it is as I've, I've already mentioned you know the purpose of builder's business black belt for me is it is it's fundamentally a laboratory so we've got builders that have been around for a long time they've been doing it the standard way uh and then we put them in an environment where all we focus on is doing it this new way, doing things differently. And then we get feedback from them. They share their feedback, they share their wins, they share their lessons. So they progress really, really quickly with change and refinement of how they run their businesses. Uh, and it, it, it's like a laboratory for us because we can get ideas uh, and and theories and we can share them with the guys the guys can give me their feeling about it um, whether whether they think it would work whether they think it wouldn't work but we go and and try these things anyway we implement them uh, and and guess what folks many of them work the other side of that coin is many of them don't but the things that we talk about in this podcast at least are the things that we've proven to have worked like there's nothing that we talk about in this podcast that is just my theory that hasn't been uh, put out there in the real world by a, a multiple number of businesses uh, building businesses different types of building businesses uh, and and we figure out whether it works or not and if it doesn't work we we figure out workarounds or refinements to make them work to overcome the problem so there's nothing on this show that uh, is just theory one of the main motivations, as I've already said, is that the, the, the common business model that most builders use, and, and this is part of the problem, is, is when you come into the building industry, you look around and see what other builders, what other seemingly, and if you're just listening to the audio uh, version of this podcast, I'm doing air quotes right now, uh, the, the, the common building business model, new builders come into the, uh, the building industry and they look around and look at the seemingly successful builders that have got the nice car and all of that sort of stuff and they look successful from the outside, but the majority of them are a house of cards. They could fall over at any moment. The internal workings of that building business model are fundamentally flawed and they don't give the building business owner what they started the building their own building business for they don't give them the, the time freedom that they'd like they don't give them the financial freedom they'd like and they certainly don't give them the meaning that they're after the the, the enjoyment the passion uh, and so th that's the reason that we do what we do to help you get all of those three things back and so I want to break our business model down into four parts. And the four parts are attract, qualify, deliver, plus, and scale. And I want to just briefly unpack all four of those so you can understand what we're going to be talking about in detail in future uh, podcast episodes. So the first one, we call it attract, and it replaces marketing. 
in fact, in Builders Business Black Belt, we endeavor not to even use the word marketing. We do slip from time to time, but we endeavor to talk about attract because marketing, if, if, if I were to ask 10 builders, what do you do for marketing? All 10 builders will tell me what they do for advertising. And advertising is only a very small part of marketing. Whereas if we change the word, the overall descriptive word to attract, what do you do to attract? That changes the focus. And what we talk about all of the time are these three questions. L please tell me, get very, very clear on the types of projects you want to attract. Please tell me and get very, very clear on the type of people that you want to attract, the people um, that you want to work with, that you want to allow into your business as clients. And then the third and most important question, and this is where the power comes from by changing the word from marketing to attract, is this question here is, after I know what type of projects and what type of people that I want to attract, I've got to ask myself the question, am I attractive? It's not an ego-based question. Am I attractive to people that I want to attract with the type of projects that I want to attract? You've got to continually be asking yourself and your team, are we attractive to those type of people? Then when you start to understand that uh, the answer to that question, are we attractive, has multiple parts. So is our messaging, so that's the normal advertising stuff, is our messaging attractive to the people that we're trying to attract? But then are our processes, how we answer the phone the very first time that we get a contact from a prospect, is that attractive to the type of people that we're trying to attract? Then is the, the next conversation and the meetings and the procedures and the systems and the communication and the energy and the vibe, our ability to understand from their perspective, are all of those things attractive to the type of people that we want to attract? How we hand over, is that attractive to the type of people we want to attract? So they remember that for years and years and years to come. And when their friends come around and visit and say, how, what was it like to bu the building? You know, what was your builder like? They won't walk around and say, come and have a look at these mitre joints and the quality of workmanship. They never talk about that stuff. All they ever talk about was how the builder made them feel. So is your handover, does that, does it, is that attractive to the type of people that you want to attract, you want, you want to bring into your business? After that, in fact, a really great friend of mine, Ian Bosler, he, um, uh, runs a business called Intertype in Victoria. Amazing guy. If you need any printing gun, done, go and see Ian Bosler at Intertype. Uh, and, and he's just a marketing genius also. There, I've used that word. Uh, but he, he once told me, he said that the selling begins after handover. For a builder, the selling begins after handover. And I, that was so powerful. It's like, so once we've handed over, what do you do to remain attractive and have your past client on your attract strategy team going around remarking upon your business and the experience they had and how you made them feel. So number one, instead of talking about marketing, we talk about attract and are we attractive and what do we do to become attractive and more attractive and more attractive uh, and, and improve that over time. The second part of our four parts is qualify. And this replaces sales. Um, very early on in the piece, we were trying to teach builders some, some sales processes and, and it was really like trying to push string. It was very, very difficult. Most builders are really, really bad at sales uh, and hate it anyway. And what we found was by flipping the script and starting to talk to our builders about well, instead of selling, what you need to do is shift your mindset to become the prize. And instead of selling and you being the talent and juggling and bringing your dog and pony show, so you are hopefully chosen by your prospect, you flip the script and you become the prize and you 
become the judge. They become the talent and you are now qualifying them to decide whether you want to open the door to your business and allow them in so they get the prize, which is you, or you refer them on and you, you show them the door rather than opening the door to your business. And it is amazing when you flip that mindset and you become the judge, they become the talent. Particularly if you've done this first bit correctly. Remember we talked about attract. If you are incredibly attractive and they want you to manage their project because of the value that you've given them through understanding and your communication and, and just the, the ability to build rapport and trust and connection with them. I think I might have said connection twice, but it's important, so we'll say it twice. Uh, if you've done that job well, then you move into the qualification process where you're going, just cool your jets. I need you to just show me your form and jump over these hurdles here. And if you jump over these hurdles, we will open the door and we will help you. We will work together as a team. We will have a fantastic experience. You will get incredible value for your investment and it will be something that you will remark upon forever. That needs to be the experience. And that happens when you switch from selling to qualifying. But you have to become the prize first. You have to be attractive. And that's why all of our Builders Business Black Belt members get paid for their proposal because they build that trust, they build that rapport, they build that connection. They're incredible at understanding the fears, frustrations, wants and aspirations of their prospects. So their prospects want to become clients, but one of the hurdles to becoming a client is you need to invest in a professionally prepared proposal. Is this sounding good? Ah, oh, I just noticed that Mass Matt Old has uh, left a comment and given me the. Is that, are they sharkers, charkers, whatever what do you call them? Oh, yeah, there. Yeah, you can tell that I'm hip and I'm cool and I know all that shit. <laughs> so, g'day, Matt. Be talking to you uh, in twenty, in thirty, forty-three minutes. Be talking to you in forty-three minutes. In Black Belt, we have a. Uh, a momentum call with our members every single day. Like how bizarre is that? Our members show up every single day for an hour out of their day because they know that their personal and professional development is the most important part of building their business. Matt's one of them, you'll be there. Um, so that's the second part, attract, then qualify. That replaces sales. The third thing is what we call deliver plus. It's two parts. The first part is deliver. The second part is plus. Amazing. So what do I mean by deliver? This replaces the build, right? I know you know what you're doing when you're building a house. I know that. But there is something that I find is missing with most builders, and that is they don't deliver. Well, what is it that I'm talking about that they don't deliver? They don't deliver on the basic expectations. I cannot tell you how many times when we've had these momentum calls and conversations with our Black Belt members that they said, I've been, I, I was awarded the, 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 the job, you know, we got this project. Uh, the people were over the moon and they told me that the reason that, um, that, that they were so happy that, that we'd taken them on is because we were the only builder that turned up when we said we would. I, I just think that is so sad that the industry is so poor at delivering on basic expectations. Like if someone says they're going to show up at two o'clock, wouldn't you expect them to? Or wouldn't you expect them to, to, to phone up if they were going to be late and, and, and let you know ahead of time? You know, we, we, the deliver part is just the basic part. We need to find out what our prospects and what our clients' expectations are, and we need to bloody deliver on it. It's that simple. It's not rocket science. We, but to be able to deliver on their expectations, you need to know what they are. Well, that means you need to listen. You don't talk, you listen and find out what their expectations are. But the awesome source, the magic pill, part of this that really makes the big difference for your your clients experience is the plus bit on deliver plus 
deliver is just delivering on that on their expectations you you'll find that just by doing that people will be ecstatic but you can take them over the top by this little bit of plus and that is becoming a detective becoming a super sleuth finding out what their interests are what their passions are what their concerns are all of you know, in their life not just about this project and and doing little things that show that you listen and you care like some of our guys have just done simple things like invited the the client to to the the job in fact they they got the client picked up you know in a hire car got them picked up brought them to the site and the site was just the slab there was no walls there was no framing nothing um just the other day one of our members did this the, the customer came and helped chalk out just the chalk line chalked out where all of the walls were going to go and then they put a table in the dining room on the slab and they sat around and they catered for it and the guys were there and the customers were there in the dining room having a good old time for an hour or so the customers couldn't stop talking about it that's the plus folk that's 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 the magic part that's that's the awesome source is when you give them experiences like that that they can't help but talk about so please don't think that you're doing a great job just by delivering on your clients expectations we've got to exceed them and how we do that is not talking about how much we care but shutting up about it and showing them how much you care and there's a ton of really simple super cheap ways to to do this uh, and it becomes a lot of fun and your customers become fans and they go out telling people about how amazing you are and then that sort of goes right back around to that attract process again so even the deliver plus part and i didn't mention that the qualify part that that, that contributes to the effectiveness of your attract strategy the deliver plus part definitely contributes to the effectiveness of your attract strategy the fourth thing is scale. I'm not going to talk a whole lot about that right now, but the, the meaning of scale kind of isn't how most people take it. That, in, in fact, when I talk to many builders about scaling their business, they freak out because maybe they've, they've had a, a bunch of staff before and it all turned to custard and, and now they've gone back down just to themselves and an apprentice or whatever. But many builders are, are, are afraid to scale because what they think scale means is simply growth. And I understand why they're fearful of it is because if you try to grow a fundamentally flawed model, the, you know, the shit fight's just going to get bigger. The problems are going to multiply. So of course you wouldn't want to do that. But what scaling is to us is identifying something that we want to improve in the business. Let's say it's the financial performance. And we know that we, it's going to take extra work, extra time, extra effort. We've got to step outside our comfort zone to get that next, next click or couple of clicks up in the financial performance of the business. So we're adding to our daily action list, our list of things to do. We know we've got to work some extra time, some extra effort to make that happen. But once it happens, you shift your focus to how can i maintain that new outcome with little to no reliability uh, reliance on me it, I, I i don't i can take things off my to-do list i can i can get rid of them i can automate them i can outsource them i can delegate them so they come off my list of things to do every day so you end up with a ratchet system and folks this works you decide what the thing is that you want to improve and you put the effort in and that goes up but your effort goes up your required effort goes up but then once you hit it and this is the important bit this is why you've got to select the the the, the outcome with specificity otherwise you just keep doing this you know and you'll improve your your, your outcomes and your performances but your Effort's going up with it all of the time. And at some stage, you're going to run out of effort. You'll explode or implode. And if you're required to maintain these outcomes and your effort goes, I, I, I can't do it anymore. And you go, Shh. guess what happens to the outcomes? They come down. But if you go, I want to get this to here. 
And I know it's going to take me that amount of effort, so you do it. You go, ah, like up to here. Then, once you've reached that, it's essential. This is the ratchet scaling system that you then focus on what I need to do to get my requirement for this back down here again. And then you pick something new and you go, ah, and then you go, what do I need to do to get my requirement back down to zero? And so can you see this ratchet system? And it absolutely works. So you can scale your business without it getting out of control and without it eating you up and, and, and stealing your life away, which is what happens to, to most builders. So I hope that all makes sense. So we've got a track, we've got qualify, we've got deliver plus, we've got scale. These are the topics that we're going to unpack in future podcast episodes going live into the Builders Business Success Forum. Um, so if you want to be part of that, you just need to be in the Builders Business Success Forum and uh, you can jump in and ask questions and make comments and, and join in on the journey. So I hope all of that makes sense. I hope it's got you a bit inspired, a bit curious to start to pay a bit more attention to this stuff. So I'm going to do a Q&A right now. So a question that we get asked all the time. How do we compete with volume builders? And, and it really frustrates the, the small independent builder. How do we compete with these volume builders? Uh, let me first answer this by unpacking the meaning of compete. So I, I want to change your mindset about this question to start with. The meaning of compete actually means to conspire together. So competing is what we do in, in Builders Business Black Belt. All of the builders in the group help each other. They share their mistakes. They share their wins. They share their processes that they've proven to work to speed up the progress of improvement for every other member. Okay, that's called competing. We are conspiring together to help each other. I think what most people uh, mean when they use the word compete is oppose, the opposition. Okay, so the volume builder is the opposition. We're not competing with them. We're not conspiring to succeed together with them. We're competing, uh, sorry, we're, we're opposing them. And I, and I would say to you, don't. Like the simple answer to this question is don't oppose them. Don't try and get into the price war with them. The secret to this, and we kind of touched on it with, with what I was talking about before with the, with the qualified process and the Deliver Plus process, is offer something that volume builders simply can't deliver. And that is a quality, intimate customer experience. Because you're small and maneuverable, you can do that. The volume builders can't. They are full of staff who really don't give a toss. Many of them are just there for the paycheck. Maybe there's some volume builders listening to this or staff listening to this that are pissed off right now. Sorry, <laughs> that's just the way I see it. But if you're a small, agile builder, you can do all of these things. And I say you can because right at the start, I said, I'm not going to tell you anything that hasn't been proven. And our Builders Business Black Belt members are small and nimble and agile and can change fast and they can implement these things and they can deliver a quality, intimate customer experience far, far more valuable than the experience that any customer gets with a volume builder. There'll be plenty of people around that say, you know, the volume builder was good. There's a difference between good and remarkable. They'll never become remarkable but you can. And therefore, you don't join them in the price war. You don't try and compete. And I know I'm using the word uh, in, in, inappropriately after my last exp uh, explanation of the word compete, but don't get into price, price war competition. So I hope that answers that question. Um, if you want to ask some more questions about it, you know where to find us. Personal productivity hack time. I'm trying to get through this real fast because I'm noticing I'm over time already. We're trying to keep this to a 30 minute, but I don't do very good with that. It's one of my uh, Achilles heel is, <laughs> is keeping things to time because I want to share so much with you. Personal productivity hack is this, that uh, 
how do I get more done in less time? You know, what's the best time management tip I get asked all of the time? And here it is. It is your language. And I'm pointing to my head because there's language up here, your thoughts, the, the words that you use to speak to other people and the words you use to speak to yourself. I've always said, change your words and it will change your life. I'll guarantee you this, that if you stop saying, I don't have time, I didn't get a chance. If you change that language, which puts you out of control because you're blaming this thing out there called time, it's got nothing to do with time. It's got everything to do with the choice you just made. So if you start to take back control with your language and instead of saying, I didn't have time, say, I chose not to do this and I chose to do that. I mean, you've got to pick your battles if you're going to start to uh, speak like that. Imagine saying to a, a client or a family member, well, I, I, I chose not to come home and have dinner with you because I chose to do this. Because that's the truth, folks. We're not making it up. That's the truth. But we protect ourselves by saying, I'm sorry, I wanted to be there, but I couldn't be there because. What a load of horseshit. Let's start to take some responsibility start to tell the truth at least to yourself in the beginning and saying i'm choosing not to do that and i'm choosing to do this everything is a choice and if you don't believe me throw some comments at me throw some scenarios at me that you believe aren't a choice there are a couple death i guess you can prolong it through some better choices you can put it off through some better choices but it's going to come but it's i don't know that there's much more than that so throw some at me, but just start saying, I choose to do this and I choose not to do that. Get rid of the language that says I have to do this and I couldn't do this and I didn't have time and I didn't get a chance and all of that. So get rid of that stuff and tell me what happens. That's your personal productivity hack. It works, folks. So what's the takeaway? The takeaway from this is, I think, is best summed up by Zig Ziglar, who's no longer with us. And he says, if you're going to keep on doing what you've been doing, you're going to keep on getting what you've been getting. And the current model is flawed. And if you keep using the current business model, the same as all business, all builders do, many builders do, most builders do, nothing's going to change. If you're going to keep on doing what you've been doing, you're going to keep on getting what you've been getting. So we need to do different. We need to think different. We need to believe different and we'll get different outcomes. There is a better way and it's proven. In Black Belt, we're proving it all of the time. And so I'm not going to share anything with you that doesn't work when it's implemented. And there might be, you know, you might try it and it doesn't work for you. Maybe you're just not doing it right. Maybe you need to ask us some questions so we can help you to do it right. And that's what we're here for is, is to help you to do it right. So that is my takeaway. Hey, so I hope you enjoyed the replay of that episode now some exciting things are happening right now and uh one of the things is that we're basically gonna i'll just put my teeth back in i hope you enjoyed the episode there's some pretty exciting things going on right now one of them is that we're basically going to get rid of our facebook groups and a bunch of other things and create an environment for builders only. So getting rid of the Facebook groups has been motivated by all of the distractions, people that hate Facebook, getting rid of all of the notifications and creating an environment where only builders who are motivated and focused on success and improving their business all get together in one environment. And that environment is going to be completely focused on that. You're not going to have all of those distractions. We're creating our own app. It's going to be called the Builder's Toolshed. And you'll be able to download the app, have it on your phone, get all of our notifications, watch the podcast live. You're going to be able to interact with other really successful builders, learn from OPE, that's other people's experience. It puts you on the fast track to success. Now, it's not open yet, but it will be really, really soon. And there's a link in the comments section, or if you're watching this on YouTube, it'll be in the description. And if you click that link and you just register your interest to join the Builders Toolshed, you're going to get a free membership. So the first people that 
jump in and register their interest. We're going to be allowing them into that environment for absolutely free. It'll stay free for you. Uh, and you will avoid the the cost that will be put on there a little bit later on as it starts to develop. Because we want to make sure that only people get in there that are serious about the uh, the improvement, the the success, and have that sort of focus uh, on their business. So we're, we're going to ha- create an environment that doesn't have all of the lurkers and the free pool and all of the free pool are, are people that want everything for nothing. They don't do anything, but they just sort of ask questions, waste your time, and want everything for nothing. But these uh, th- this environment is going to be for genuinely success oriented builders who want to talk about what can be done to make their business different. If you want to join that uh, environment, all you need to do is hit that link, register your interest. As soon as the door opens, you'll be allowed in for free and we'll be pumping a lot of really high quality content and resources in there for you to help you make your business more successful. So I hope you enjoyed the episode. I hope you register your interest for the Builders Toolshed. And we'll see you next time on the Builders Business Success Podcast. I'm Mick Hawes. Bye for now. Okay, that's the podcast. If you have a question or want to know how Mick can help with your building business, email your request to mick at buildersbusinessblackbelt.com.au. Do it. Do it now.